This is Michelle Sullivan reporting from Vancouver, where I'm at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference. I'm with Dr. Christine Yaffe. She's a researcher at the University of California, San Francisco. Today she presented some really interesting data, a longitudinal study suggesting that sleep disorders might actually precede cognitive decline. Yes, um, we found that uh, in older women who did not have dementia when they started, if we looked at objective measures, so we actually uh, did some measurement where they, they, we could assess their how much they slept, the quality of their sleep, and also whether they had any sleep apnea or, or sleep disordered breathing. And what we found was that in these older women who were dementia free, disruptions in their sleep, whether it was measured by, by the am amount they slept or, or the quality they slept or if they had sleep disordered breathing or even if their, their circadian rhythms were shifted, that this was a very important risk for developing dementia and MCI down the line. So five years later, they had about a doubling of, of dementia and MCI compared to women who didn't have those sleep problems. And then we went ahead and we looked, we tried to understand what was it because they had um, you know, other comorbidities, heart disease or diabetes, or, or maybe because of their sleep medications. And when even when we took these into account, we still found this really important independent association with sleep quality, objectively measured sleep quality, and risk of dementia. So this is really one of the first studies that's really been able to disentangle the direction, what's chicken and egg, and we're finding that sleep seems to be a very important risk factor for dementia and MCI in our hands in older women. From a clinical standpoint, what can you advise physicians about um, attending to sleep hygiene in their patients? Well, exactly that, really. I mean, I think um, uh, what I would advise is please attend to sleep <laughs> hygiene. Um, no, in all, in all seriousness, you know, some people think that about 50% of elderly have sleep complaints, that they say they're not sleeping as well as they used to for a variety of reasons. And I think just understanding that sleep problems are common, that you can diagnose them, you don't necessarily need an expensive sleep evaluation, and that there are things one can do to help sleep. Uh, so you can advise some basic things, you know, don't drink coffee after the morning, uh, don't have naps in the day, uh, try and have it be quiet, try and avoid certain medications, or possibly being treated for sleep apnea. So, so there are lots of steps one can do, and, and that's number one, understanding that these, these um, problems are so common in the elderly, and then I think understanding the link with cognition, knowing that if you see an elderly person with sleep problems, you should be thinking this could be a risk factor for, for cognitive impairment down the line, possibly even screening them for cognitive uh, uh, um, function maybe following them over time to make sure because of course if there is something we want to intervene early.